Hello, welcome to Puffs and Poetry. I'm your host, Jessica, a writer, cannabis aficionado, and poetry lover. Today, I am reading you a couple poems from Mary Oliver's book of poetry, New and Selected Poems, published in 1992. But before I get into that, let's roll up a joint. I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm smoking and where I am. I am smoking a type one joint today, which refers to a type one hemotype, which classifies cannabis by its dominant cannabinoids. A type one strain is dominant in THC. A type two strain is dominant in CBD and THC, and a type three strain is dominant in CBD alone, which is what we might typically call hemp. I am out of CBD right now, so I'm smoking a lot of type one these days. I'm also using this zigzags combo pack to roll up. I love a combo pack of papers that come with the papers and the tips so I don't have to slowly tear apart the rolling paper container in order to have tips. Mm. Oh, this smells orangey. So I don't have a ton of information on this weed or where it's coming from. I purchased it from a friend of mine in a state without a recreational cannabis market. It is always an interesting experience purchasing off the legacy markets, what some call the illicit markets, um, just because you don't have as much information as you have in recreational markets. Obviously, there's no legal state testing mandated and you really just kind of get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. This cannabis is nice and sticky, very trichome rich, and it's sticking together very well in my joint, which should make it pretty easy to roll, which I always appreciate. It's always a gamble getting cannabis whoop, <laughs> in the legacy market simply because you don't know what you're getting. Sometimes you get a strain that is beautiful and aromatic and floral, and it's got these vibrant colors tucked in the trichomes, and you don't know what it is and you never see it again. And other times you get weed that has been very poorly dried and cured and has lost a lot of its uh, color. It's, you know, very dark. It's not very fragrant anymore, but it is what it is. I am in Florida right now, in one of the last truly wild places in the state. I have seen manatees, I have seen rattlesnakes, I have seen turtles laying eggs, um, and I've seen some really big temperature swings. The past couple days it's been down in the 40s, which is quite cool for Florida. And today it is not super warm, it's probably only in the 60s, but it is incredibly humid. You walk outside and you feel how thick the air is a little grass poking my arm. <laughs> there's a lot of little grass around here. Hopefully there's not too much living in the grass that's going to climb on me during this. There's not too much wind today, which uh, makes it much easier to smoke outside. Florida has a pretty strong medical market, although it is one that is dominated by multi-state operators or MSOs, but it has one of the most robust medical markets for any state in the South. So that's definitely something to be celebrated, even if the distribution and the sale of it is not as open and inclusive as we would like it to be. So today, <coughs> ooh, <coughs> when it hits unexpectedly. <laughs> So today I am reading a couple poems from Mary Oliver's book, New and Selected Poems, Volume 1, published in 1992.
Our first poem today is called When Death Comes. When death comes like a hungry bear in autumn, when death comes and takes all the bright coins from his purse to buy me and snaps the purse shut, when death comes like the measle pox, when death comes like an iceberg between the shoulder blades, I want to step through the door full of curiosity, wondering what is it going to be like that cottage of darkness. And therefore I look upon everything as a brotherhood and a sisterhood. And I look upon time as no more than an idea, and I consider eternity as another possibility. And I think of each life as a flower, as common as a field daisy, and as singular. And each name a comfortable music in the mouth, tending as all music does toward silence and each body a lion of courage and something precious to the earth. When it's over, I want to say all my life I was a bride married to amazement. I was the bridegroom taking the world into my arms. When it's over, I don't want to wonder if I have made of my life something particular and real. I don't want to find myself sighing and frightened or full of argument. I don't want to end up simply having visited this world. Oh, I caught it at the end of the poem, but I couldn't keep it going. <laughs> this poem I have the entire last stanza highlighted because I just absolutely love it. I don't want to wonder if I have made of my life something particular and real. I don't want to end up simply having visited this world. I think about this poem often when I am on the road and things are going wrong the way they only do on the road and I am so frustrated or so angry or so filled with some other big emotion that I usually call negative. It's all part of the experience. I don't want to end up simply having visited this world. Our next poem today is called Welks. Here are the perfect fans of the scallops, cohogs and weedy mussels still holding their orange fruit. And here are the whelks, whirlwinds, each the size of a fist, but always cracked and broken. Clearly they have been traveling under the sky blue waves for a long time. All my life I have been restless. I have felt there is something more wonderful than gloss, than wholeness, than staying home. I have not been sure what it is, but every morning on the wide shore, I pass what is perfect and shining to look for the whelks whose edges have rubbed so long against the edge of the world they have snapped and crumbled. They have almost vanished with the last relinquishing of their unrepeatable energy back into everything else. When I find one, I hold it in my hand. I look out over that shanking fire. I shut my eyes. Not often, but now and again, there's a moment when the heart cries aloud, yes. I am willing to be that wild darkness, that long blue body of light. This is a longer selection of poems. All right, I think the last poem we're going to do today is called October. It is a poem with seven designated stanzas and it just means it's numbered in the book, but I'm always curious about the right way to read or represent the transition between stanzas when you're reading a poem. I can clearly see when it changes from one to two to three, but I'm not 
sure how you read it or if you are even supposed to read it. So I think how I will read it is with longer, po longer pauses in between the stanzas. <clears throat> we'll come back to the joint after this one. It's a longer one. October by Mary Oliver. There's this shape, black as the entrance to a cave. A longing wells up in its throat like a blossom as it breathes slowly. What does the world mean to you if you can't trust it to go on shining when you're not there? And there's a tree long fallen once the bees flew to it like a procession of messengers and filled it with honey. I said to the chickadee, singing his heart out in the green pine tree, little dazzler, little song, little mouthful. The shape climbs up out of the curled grass. It grunts into view. There is no measure for the confidence at the bottom of its eyes. There is no telling the suppleness of its shoulders as it turns and yawns. Near the fallen tree, something, a leaf snapped loose from the branch and fluttering down, tries to pull me into its trap of attention. It pulls me into its trap of attention and when I turn again, the bear is gone. Look, hasn't my body already felt like the body of a flower? Look, I want to love this world as though it's the last chance I'm ever going to get to be alive and know it. Sometimes in late summer, I won't touch anything. Not the flowers, not the blackberries brimming in the thickets. I won't drink from the pond. I won't name the birds or the trees. I won't whisper my own name. One morning, the fox came down the hill, glittering and confident and didn't see me. And I thought, so this is the world. I'm not in it. It's beautiful. There it is. The rain has started. I began recording this and I looked up and I thought, ooh, that looks like a big cloud. And I was right. It was a big cloud of rain. <sighs> My joint is about to be out and that means I am done. Those are all the poems that I have to share with you today. Thank you for spending some time with me and with Mary Oliver. Until I see you again, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and have a wonderful day. <laughs>